I noticed one day that my hands and my feet started to swell up, inflammation. I thought at first it was the heat or, you know, I didn't really know what it was. So I lived with it for about a year and then I went to the doctor and they diagnosed me with autoimmune disease. I lived with that disease for seven years and then one day I woke up, I touched my chest and I felt like a little hard pea, like a pea that you eat. And it was hard and it was completely different to anything I'd ever experienced before. So I knew it was something. So I went to the doctor and he said, I don't know if it's cancer. I think we should go in and look because my feeling is it is. And as they took me out, they said to my boyfriend at the time, yes, it's cancer. Stage three and um, we have to act fast. They took that out. I lost uh, my lymph nodes here. So that was the operation. And then they, they said, um, we're going to put you on very strong chemotherapy and radiotherapy. You're under 50. We're going to do it hard so that you have a strong chance of survival. Even though I have a, a holistic background, I, was, I studied acupuncture, I've always used homeopathy. I really felt to trust them. But my intuition told me to, to follow them. And then I started on my chemotherapy. And I did six of those. The first few chemos were okay. In fact, I felt quite high because I never did Class A drugs. And so this, this drug in my system, I was all happy and crazy. But as you go on in the chemo, it gets tougher and tougher and tougher. The last one, I, I ended up in intensive care. I had no taste. I couldn't taste food or I couldn't taste anything that I drank. And I remember at one point, I wanted to swap my eyesight for my taste. Because I was just, please let me just taste something. I saw a vitamin doctor and he said to me, you need to take probiotics to line your stomach. When the chemotherapy hits, it doesn't cause so much damage. So I started to be more careful what I was eating. I became aware that my body was acidic and my stomach is really your first brain and you don't really think about that until you're in this situation. I took that all the way through my chemo and I think it's very important that women take probiotics. I noticed with other friends that had cancer or women that I met that their husbands didn't touch them since they found out they had cancer. They weren't having sex anymore because their husbands thought that they were dying. Now, and my husband didn't think. And that was a benefit for me because we carried on having a, a sexual relationship through the chemo. And actually, you know, it, it made me feel so good and loved. And it was so important, it made me feel alive. And it was a little thing in all this darkness that was good.
find some faith in any any religion or any in in yourself really but maybe you need a tool you know people go to church I chanted I've been a Buddhist for 32 years um, I started chanting when I was 18 um, and I follow a Japanese Buddhism and we chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo and that means I dedicate my life to the mystic law so you don't try and explain it with the head I think that helps to have a practice daily practice where you you connect with the universe a bit more it gives you a, a strength from inside it's positive in everything it's just if you can find it even in this terrible moment you can find beauty you can find beautiful things you can laugh even at yourself you know I think it's finding those things all the way through is not easy to do but if you can do it it's really valuable I remember when after the first chemo and I was in Santillalia and my hair was was dropping out as I was walking down the road and I went into the hairdresser and the, the hairdresser said to me do you want to go into another room are you embarrassed and I said no I'm not embarrassed just shear it off so they cut it off and I've got a very nice neck <laughs> <laughs> so actually I didn't look so bad. So for me, the hair wasn't such a big deal. Every woman is unique and every cancer is unique. So you can't actually compare. It is very individual. You find out you've got cancer, then you start the treatment. Everybody's like, oh my, you know, your friends, your family. She's got cancer and everybody's there for you. Then you get the all clear, the cancer's gone. Everybody goes away, but you're left with a body. You've gone through the menopause. You've got no hair. You've got no eyebrows, but you're left with this body that doesn't work right. And I think we have to, you know, support women after cancer. I'm eight years clear now, and you can see I've got my hair back and everything. I'm completely healed. I do still have a few problems. My driving, I have panic attacks in the car. I can't really drive properly, but I just get on the bus. I drive and I get on the bus and I, you know, life's too short to make it a problem. But everything is temporary. It's just a moment. In the bigger picture of your life, it's just a moment. I don't know, I feel like I've been born again. Thank you.